Hey there, it's E Squared Photography. I'm Erin. And I'm Emily, and we are here to keep things simple and fun. Are you a senior photographer, or maybe you're just starting out as a senior photographer? Well, we're here to make sure you feel 110% prepared for every session that you go to. And make sure to watch all the way until the end because we have something special just for you. We promise to have you entering your next senior session feeling confident and at ease with every step of the process. For the best photography tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. All right, we're gonna get right into it. So how do you prepare yourself for your first senior session? Or maybe this is your second or third, or maybe even more, but we're gonna help you prepare. So step one, picking a time. So once your senior has contacted you, Choose a time. We love to shoot two hours before sunset. So what we'll do is we'll hop on Google and search sunset on May 17th or whatever date that it might be. And it gives us a little, or it gives us a time and we pick just two hours prior to that time or approximately two hours prior to that time. So step one, choose your time. Okay, so once we've selected a time and confirmed that time with our client, the next thing we do is we send them a questionnaire. This could be through email. If you have um, some sort of software that you use to create all of your forms on, you could use that. It could be really anything. So what we include on that questionnaire are things like the location that they might wanna shoot at. And we do try to tell them like, we do need shade, all of this kind of stuff, educate them on the light, but the locations that they maybe want to and shoot at. I think at. on our questionnaire, we also offer like a check box or like a drop down and they can choose the locations that we already have listed there because sometimes your senior will say, I have no idea. Am I supposed to know where these are going to be taken? They're expecting you as a photographer to know. And it's nice to actually be able to have control over that if you can. So offering some suggestions is a good idea as well. So location. Um, then the next thing is any props that they might wanna have. We asked them about that, like if they wanna do sports photos, um, do they want to have their jerseys, all of that kind of stuff. So we make sure to know um, that information ahead of time so we can kind of start planning stuff out. Um, then we ask them if they have any insecurities, like maybe they have something on their face, a scar on their face that they don't like that could be edited out by you, or just maybe they like the left side of their face better than the right. We really try to pay attention to those. Uh, most of the seniors will say, no, I don't have any insecurities. Uh, other things is we just ask them random information about them. Um, to get to know them before the session. So then when we get to the session, we could be like, hey, I saw that you're planning on going to school to be an engineer. Where are you planning to go? We can ask them questions just to get ourselves more comfortable with them and make them feel comfortable. Um, other things that we um, ask for is we ask for their cell number and just general information that we need from them, but cell number so then that we can text them because those seniors, they like text messaging. They don't like phone calls, anything like that. So we get their number, mom's cell phone number, so we can send text messages to make sure we are ready to go for the session. Um, and then we also ask, what are they gonna plan to do with their photos? Are they gonna print them? Are they gonna want them on their wall to make an album? Just so we know ahead of time what they might use them for. All right, so step three, once we've received their questionnaire, we actually put it all into the Google Calendar event that we've created, which would be their session, the date and time of their session. But then we add little details in there. For example, we add in location because once you get multiple amounts of sessions, you're gonna forget what so-and-so wanted and what, what they're gonna bring along and where they're going to school. So we even add anything into the notes section of Google Calendar, such as they wanted you know, softball pictures by the softball field and they really liked a bleacher picture from so-and-so from the year before, or maybe we'll even add something like they plan to go to UW-Eau Claire for nursing, whatever it might be. We add that stuff in there, so then we have one place to go and it's easy to access for both of us. Um, so yeah, step three, add it to your Google Calendar or some sort of um, event planning tool app that right. you might prefer to use. Yeah, and something else with that, so she talked about how we might add in like, plans to go here for engineering, whatever it is. Um, what's nice is you're in the middle of the session and you're like, oh man, this is kind of uncomfortable. What could we start talking about? Or even right before you get out of the car to start the session, quick glance at it and be like, okay, here's some talking points that I could use just to warm up that senior and make them feel comfortable. 
Yep, that's something we do right before the session on our way to the session is one of us will glance at the, um, the Google Calendar just to review anything that we possibly need to. All right, so right now what we want you guys to do is comment below with your biggest struggle during a senior session. So is it the lighting? Is it the posing? Is it just varying up locations and picking the right locations? Maybe it's just the awkward silence that you have and seniors make you uncomfortable for some, for some reason. What is it? Comment below. So a couple days before the session, the next thing we do is we will send them a text or an email depending on what they prefer or what we've kind of been doing with them uh, with the following information just so we don't waste a lot of back and forth time. So we like to remind them of the date so then they don't show up on the wrong date. <laughs> the time of the session, where we're going to meet them. And if you can, a bonus, actually show them and share the location with them. That's an, an awesome bonus. So you're really on the same page. Yep. Um, we wanna remind them of props that they need to bring. So if they're getting basketball photos, we do not provide the basketball, they need to have the basketball, uh, things like that. We remind them that we have a changing tent for them to change into at the um, session. We just pull it out of our car, set it up, and they can change in there. And then we remind them too, like how many outfits they have. So for our seniors, we have a maximum of four outfits. So we remind them you have four outfits that you can bring. Um, they can bring less than four, but we don't want them to bring more than four because otherwise the session will drag on or we will run out of time and not have very many shots in all of the outfits. So again, when we do step four here, which is sending the reminder text or email, we just like to be extremely clean, cut, clear communication so everybody's on the same page and that they're prepared for their session. Because we've seen, you know, at the beginning of our photography business, we saw so many people show up with 18 outfit changes or maybe they showed up without a basketball or a football if they wanted to do those photos and then they're contacting the coach can we get into the school and then it just becomes a mess and it does waste a lot of time that could be put into their session so just making sure that they're over prepared for their session and that you are as well all right step five is what we call our location scout now we don't always do this if they're choosing locations to shoot their senior session that we've done multiple times and we're used to it, uh, we won't go and scout out the locations. However, if it's something new, we might, not always, but we might go drive past it during golden hour when we would actually be shooting, scout it out. Sometimes we'll even get out, take a few test shots, just so we feel over prepared for the session because otherwise it becomes stressful thinking about, oh no, is this gonna even work? When you get there and step out and you freeze up because you're not really sure if it's gonna work out. So that's why we do a little location scout if a place is unfamiliar to us. Again, this isn't something we always do, but we try to when we have the time and can do. Step six is something we used to do when we were new photographers. Now we just kind of have it down and have it figured out. Every now and then we'll still jot some things down, but we use what is called a planning worksheet where we take the worksheet and we fill out pose ideas with the locations we might go to. And then we also might write down, just jot down some other things about that seniors. So we have it all on a clipboard right in front of us and we're ready to go. It's just like you're preparing for some sort of exam or a test. You're writing down your notes, maybe rewriting them, organizing your thoughts so you feel ready for that test. It's the same thing. So we did that right away. Once we got the hang of it and we felt we had enough practice, we didn't need to use the planning worksheet anymore, but we do recommend it for people who are just starting. Step seven. So step seven is really important and you just get in the groove of it once you get used to doing sessions. So it's charge your batteries, make sure all of your camera settings are good to go. Maybe take a few test shots right outside your door before you leave. Make sure you have your SD cards in. We've shown up to sessions before where we both forgotten our SD cards or maybe we were charging our batteries and forgot to put the battery back in the camera. So just double checking everything and getting that into a habit that you have every time you leave for your session. A couple other things that you might make sure you have is we probably the two main things that we bring in addition to our camera and our lenses would be a step ladder and a reflector um, and our changing tent I guess I should say of course. 
And um, otherwise, like if you have any additional ideas that maybe you wanted to bring something new, a little new prop or something fun to try with the senior, you could always bring that along too. So we've done that before. All right, so step eight is just memorizing some information about your senior. So like we said before, right before we get out of the car, we just glance over our Google Calendar with some random information and facts about our seniors so we are good to go and ready to have some good conversations with them. So now that you know how we prepare for a senior session, we understand that this can be a little bit overwhelming, but we tried to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, but what we've done is we've created something just for you. All right, you can find in our description below a freebie, which is a planning worksheet that will help you feel over prepared for your next senior session and you can print as many as you want to use. In addition, we've also added some extremely helpful posing tips when it comes to seniors. So what two things are must have for you at any session, whether it be a senior session, family session, what are two things you always need to bring? Comment down below. If this video was helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with a friend so we know to make more videos just like this one. And if you have any questions at all about our senior workflow and how we run things, make sure to send us a message. You can send us a message down in the comments below. You can find us at Instagram at E Squared Photography School, or you can contact us on Facebook. And you know what? Stay tuned for future videos and we will see you next time.